In this Cinema 4D Quick Tip, I'm going to show you three different ways for arranging chairs in a raked theater or lecture hall setup. Now, I'm using chairs here, but you can swap out the chair for a product and you've got an instant point of sale display. This is a universal technique. I'm using a honeycomb array here because that's my preferred way of setting up rows and columns of objects. But all three of these techniques work exactly the same whether you're using a honeycomb array or a grid array. So let's jump right in. The first thing that you might try is the step effector. Now the step effector will increase the value with each progressive clone. The issue here is that it's not limited to rows, it's actually affecting each clone in a line. And we'll just go ahead and switch the effect here from scale to position. And we'll go ahead and set the position to something like 250. So you can see that each individual chair is being affected. Well, the way you can get around that with the step effector is using the step gap. Now, this isn't going to work intuitively if you, you leave this default curve in here because this curve just messes things up. So we'll right click and switch it to a straight linear curve. And now we can set up a step gap in order to affect each row. Uh, I went with 10 here intuitively. You can see that's one off, so we'll go ahead and drop it down to nine. So when you're using a honeycomb array, it's going to be the count width divided by two minus one. And now you can see that we've got perfectly aligned rows. But of course, the trick is that this step gap is going to vary based on the number of chairs you have. And so if all of a sudden I need to add some more chairs, then I have to go back and adjust the step gap. This can be an endless game of back and forth, and uh, it can get a little bit tedious. So let's look at another technique. And the next technique is to use a plane effector with fall off. So here we have a plane effector, and you can see that what the plane effector does is it just moves all of the clones up uh, on the y-axis, because that's what we have set up here. I'm going to use that same 250 centimeter offset. But what we can do is adjust the effect here with fall off. So let's go over here to the side and we're going to go into the fall off tab. And I'm going to set the shape here to linear. Now we want to make sure that the linear fall off is going in this direction that we want the rate to actually happen. And it is in this case. And what we want to do is set the size of this in the z direction so that it encompasses all of the rows basically and then we can go in here and adjust the fall off we want this actually to be a hundred percent so that again there's no curve involved it's a straight linear effect here and you can see that this is basically what we're looking for it's just backwards so we'll just hit invert and now we have our raked seating now one of the nice benefits of this technique is that you can go in here to the fall off spline and you can actually adjust how that rake occurs. So if certain rows need to have a bigger offset than others, you can do that. Or say for instance you need two rows per offset, you can kind of achieve that with the spline here. Uh, the downside of course with this, and I'll go ahead and reset the spline, is that again if you adjust the number of rows it's going to stop working because you have to adjust the fall off length accordingly so that's an option that can be handy in a lot of cases and it's very visual to set up so i like it for that reason but my preferred option is actually to use the formula effector now don't let that scare you off immediately it's really simple i'm going to add a formula effector and again, while I'm adding all of these effectors, you notice that the cloner is selected so that the effector is automatically applied to the cloner. And here we're going to go ahead and set this again so that we've got a position of 250. And we need to adjust this formula. We're just going to take that out completely. Well, MoGraph has built in what are called UVW coordinates. Now, these are not UVW in the sense of texturing. What they are is a zero to one count in each direction of a grid. So this would be the U direction, the V direction, and the W direction is going upward. So if I set this to U, you can see that we're increasing the height of the chairs this way. So obviously we don't want to use U, we'll use V. And you can see that as simple as that, all you have to do is use a formula of V, and now we have all of our chairs set up in a rake. 
So we'll go ahead and go back down to something like five rows and I can add in my step four. And now you can see how quickly we've achieved that rake seating. And the beauty of course with the formula factor is I can adjust the number of chairs per row as well as the number of rows and all of this will continue to work. So that's a look at how to create raked theater or lecture hall seating in Cinema 40 with the MoGraph toolset. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create rake seating that falls along a curve because that presents its own unique challenges. If you found this tutorial helpful, please hit the like or share button and visit cinemaversity.com for more great Cinema 40 tutorials and resources.